This is the Raspberry Pi 4 first boot with a two gigabyte version, $45. A lot of new updates on this board. Right now though, it's kind of a paperweight. I'm gonna tell you why in this video. I initially wanted to make this video the first Raspberry Pi 3, 4 getting 1,000 megabits per second because I do have a fiber optic 1,000 megabit per line. And you're gonna see when we test the bandwidth in just a moment on this video. We're also gonna check some videos out really quick, some YouTube streaming, things like that. But for those of you who watch my channel, you know I'm into retro gaming. And you know there is not a version of RetroPie out yet. Installing the emulators on noobs would not be very good. Um, and you're gonna notice a lot of the drivers are not quite there for this brand new board. Um, that being said, this is going to be great in a few weeks from now. So do stay tuned, but check it out so far, what you're gonna see, what you can um, use right now. There are some applications, but as you see the new one on the right, the old Raspberry Pi 3B Plus on the left, faster dual HDMI ports, USB Type-C, USB 3.0, faster ethernet, faster Bluetooth. So there are some huge pros to this new board, but let's go ahead and jump in and check out a few things. So on first boot, I am installing a new version of Raspbian. This is Buster. So that's why a lot of these old images are not going to work. Uh, there may be a way to upgrade them. They may also be like Jesse, where you had to start with a fresh image just to really get the best out of it. And that's like with most things, you know, it's usually better to start from scratch. Just everything is more cleaner. You don't have like files that are hidden or it's not bogging down the system at all. Um, so here I am installing it. We should get to the desktop shortly. And a couple things I wanted to check really, which all we can check for now that a lot of you are interested in is the video playback and then um, network performance as well. Uh, USB performance, I didn't include that in the video here, but it's USB 3.0. So depending on what device you have on it, it should be you know way faster than the old USB uh, 2.0. Um, and remember, it's just two of those slots. So I'm just playing back some video here and you can see in the upper left hand corner, there's um, some stats for nerds. And 720p actually was playing really well. I didn't really have an issue. Um, when you get to 1080 full screen, it really starts to bog down. You get dropped frames all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, As I mentioned, I wanted to do a video because I have really fast internet here, or at least I think it's fast. It depends on where you live in the world. Um, but um, I wanted to get the full uh, 1000 megabit uh, download and upload. So you can see here in a moment, we're gonna try that um, after I'm done checking out video here. Now this is on single display, and my display is not actually 4K, so I'm not able to get 4K here, but you can absolutely um, attach this to a 4K device and output 4K um, uh, content. It's 60 frames per second with one monitor or two monitors at 30 FPS. Now, um, you know, dual monitors is cool, especially if you're tinkering, those people doing retro gaming and things like that. Somebody was like, well, what if you do Mario or uh, Nintendo DS with the two screens? Yeah, I, I just don't see that happening uh, myself, but good call, good call for sure. Um, so there you go, not that great yet. And um, before I get to the end of the video, something we're gonna see here is this is just so new that, for example, the network drivers I think need to be updated. That's my opinion on why I'm getting so slow speeds because I'm gonna do, go ahead and do a speed test with the same ethernet cable. And after I'm done testing it on the Pi, I'm gonna go ahead and do it on my laptop my gaming laptop. Now, do know I am on wired connection. If you look at the upper right hand corner of the screen, I am not on Wi-Fi. I didn't record it, but I also tried going on Wi-Fi because this is a 5G. You should be able to get 5G connection, which is pretty fast Wi-Fi, especially if you're close to the router. But I had about half the speed. So my Wi-Fi was about 75 down and then about 100 up. If you're wondering what I got Wi-Fi on the Pi for. Again, I think these drivers really need to be unlocked. Um, the Wi-Fi I wasn't really surprised with. Those of you know that Wi-Fi performance is nowhere near that of a cabled connection, a wired connection. Um, so next we're gonna jump over to my laptop, which I shot this video all within the same 30 minutes. There's no reason why my internet would just double or triple the speed within that hour. Um, so here we are on my uh, desktop computer. Um, and as you see here, my, you know, I'm not getting quite the thousand megabits that I am promised on my plant. Well, you're not actually promised it, but that's advertised. They say anything over like 500 is acceptable, but you'll see when it gets to upload here that it really cranks it up and, uh, you know, pretty sweet. I can upload YouTube videos very, very fast. Um, but what I want to talk about is really this Raspberry Pi 4. 
as you see, you know, the network capabilities are going to be there. You're going to be able to transfer files on your computer there way faster, whether it be through USB or through Ethernet. It's going to be very, very quick. Um, right now, though, this is really meant for people who want like a little desktop replacement, check email, uh, do some coding, maybe make some, uh, you know, robots and things like that. But once the emulation comes out, we will see better PSP, better uh, Dreamcast and better Nintendo 64 performance. You will not be able to play PlayStation 2 and GameCube, at least at full screen. You might be able to do like windowed mode, really small, low graphics. But, you know, why do that when you can easily do LaunchBox and put it on a PC, it's very quick, or run RetroPie ported onto a PC, or just run the emulators straight from the emulator. Um, you know, the potential is already there. Um, but that being said, this is going to rejuvenate the Pi community. Once these drivers and things are updated, the, the new architecture, the new processor GPU is much faster. So far, you know, like I said in the beginning of the video, you do have to wait until this software gets updated. Once it's all updated, and people are making great things for it. We will see um, some really cool things coming out of this, um, especially when you consider what we've seen recently with like the Blast 16 core for RetroPie and other front ends that are just beautiful, like Motion Blue. And then emulators are getting better too. So it's just a lot, a lot of potential with this. So just hang in there, wait a couple weeks. You'll know when I make a video, there will be a release on RetroPie and some uh, emulation goodness. So with all that said, that's my initial thoughts on the Raspberry Pi 4. Let me know what you all think. Let me know if you have any questions. I am going to do a video on as far as cooling because this is running a lot hotter than the previous Raspberry Pi 3B and that's to be expected with how much more performance it is boosting on the same footprint. Um, but I'll get into that in the next one so don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.